Hey, Danny, how you doing, man? Eh. Uh, whoosh. <laughs> Flawless. Because he, fly, yep. he flies. That's, uh, well, I can't fault Woo! that. Whoosh, indeed. <laughs> you nailed that. Yep. I did, I did, I got it. I, and yep. I, you know, I'm a good, I'm a good, I'm good at my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at my job. I can shout whoosh. Yeah, woo, woo. Um, but before we get to what we're talking about today, we've got some, we've got some uh, bullshit for you, haven't we? We um, do. We've always got a, a healthy dollop. <laughs> yeah. Right. Woo. Richard Branson went to space. Yeah, Ooh. good stuff. Um, yep. Danny, I would like to describe to you my morning routine, please. Um, yeah, go on. It, it, uh, what I do, right, is I, uh, I uh, the alarm goes off, and uh, Chloe gets up, she has a shower, and then uh, I go and have a shower. And uh, what I do, I walk into the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and I think, good morning, Lewis. What a great and beautiful world we live in. There are beautiful animals and, and trees. There are people out there doing good deeds. And you know what the best thing is? You have a wonderful wife and a wonderful home and a wonderful cat. Everything's brilliant. And then I uh, have a shower, I brush my teeth, and I think, you know what? Since the world is so good, I'm going to check to see if any of the a dozen men in the world who have the power to end world hunger cure cancer, yeah. uh, do essentially anything. I will check if any of them have bothered to do that while I've been asleep. Because I don't have the power to do that, but they do. Yeah. So I, I I check my phone, and I think, oh no, Elon Musk has not ended world hunger. No. Nope. Oh, no, neither has is, neither is Richard Branson. Or Jeff neither Bezos. Neither has Jeff Bezos. None of them have. Um, as a bit of an aside, uh, Mackenzie, M- Mackenzie used to be Bezos, but I don't know her first name. She's donated several billion pounds to assorted different charities uh, recently because uh, I think she's said things like nobody should have this much money and she's giving it to good causes. So that's good. Well, that's excellent. Um, yeah. Um, but but yeah, that's that's part of my morning routine. So when I woke up and I, I checked Twitter... And I thought, has Richard Branson solved world hunger while I've been asleep? Oh no, he's been to space. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, it's really, it's you know, it's really. <laughs> it's what a good a, use of money. Yeah, excellent. Send yourself to space in a plane, and uh, you know, get get yourself some get yourself some uniform. You know, your Virgin Virgin Galactic. You know, live out your your fucking Star Trek fantasy while people are starving. And, mm-hmm. and and dying of, of of cancer and COVID and all that, you know, yeah. it's it's a great it's a great use of um of, of, of money funds. and time. Yep. But but the good news is is that uh, stocks have fallen. Uh, have they? Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. When when uh, his spaceship <laughs> came back to Earth, um, yeah. So it was uh it was was it last weekend. It happened. I have no idea. I think it was last weekend. Yeah. Yeah, but sh- shares of uh, Virgin Galactic Holdings uh, fell every trading day since the space trip. Um, uh, it was like uh, by Friday, I think it was down like thirty nine percent. That is f- bizarre. I I wonder why that is. Yeah, maybe maybe people are like, yeah, this is kind of obscene, and um, <laughs> a bit. <laughs> A bit fucking Maybe stupid. people have suddenly realised. Oh, actually, no. This is kind of kind of dumb. Yeah, I want to know how much it cost. Um, I, I think the answer is an insane amount of money. Oh, it was worth um eight hundred and forty-one million dollars. <sighs> of course, it was. I wow. remember seeing um this graph someone put on Twitter. Um. I, I promise Twitter isn't where I get all of my news. Just just some of it. Um, this graph someone had put together where they said, with that 840 million or whatever it is, um, uh, Richard Branson could have done all these things and they stacked up these things in a bar chart and one of them was like, um, house every homeless person in America. One of them was give school lunches to every kid in America. It was like, it's bizarre to think that's what you're spending your money on. I mean, yeah. Christ. When, when you have that much money... The moral weight of what you do is amplified by a million percent. Because what you have with that much money is an insane amount of freedom. For True. example, if you have a pound with which you have to buy your lunch, and there's like a picture of a sandwich that's like, oh, this is um, a ham sandwich, 
uh, and it just says on the packet, yeah, this this pig that this ham came from was never happy in his life. He just hated everything. Um, he was really sad, and then we killed him. And then there's a ham sandwich to the side where it's like a picture of a pig, and it's like, oh, yeah, this pig was pretty happy. Pretty happy, easygoing pig. Uh, lived out his life till he got old, and uh, then he passed away in his sleep, and we've butchered him and, and sold him on. Um, and you've got a pound... And uh, the, por- the 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 sandwich with the sad pig is fifty p, and the yep. sandwich with the happy pig is three quid. Uh, which one are you going to pick? But if you're uh, Richard Branson, you can make all the pigs in the world happy pigs. Just as an example. Um, but what he's got is this insane amount of freedom, and he's using it to go to space for ten minutes or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, trying to trying <sighs> to f- trying to find some sort of semblance of meaning out of it. I mean, like going to space. Um makes people more creative like you know it it, it pushes uh people the forward boundaries and, of innovation and you yeah know. and stuff like that so i mean that's that's something that i mean i get that that. happens <laughs> but at the same time <laughs> like the reason it was so much more significant when man went to the moon is because it wasn't you know three fucking big kids with their big fucking daddy bucks deciding on a whim that they mm. were just going to go to space because it's something that they've always wanted to do since they were young it was mm. a coordinated effort by you know yeah you know, a government elected like representatives that that's mm. uh put it into into yeah. motion and it made it feel and as like, if it was a yeah. more humanity thing rather than oh richard branson went to space you, you know it was like Mankind went to space. Humanity went to space and landed on. Yeah, because you know? it was every taxpayer in America owned a little bit of that ship. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's, exactly. That's what makes the Apollo missions is that it's it, it's a big community effort in a very strange way. Yeah. No, that's I think that's what makes it more significant rather than you know a, a rich person uh, deciding to do that. Um, Darry says it was the same day as the Euro final. Oh, um, well, the more you know. Yeah, but we've we've talked about that in great detail. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I just, I just find it a bit obscene, to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, no, yeah, it's um, it's extremely obscene. It's 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 the greatest example of a character flaw there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? It's it's because it's it's like in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Here we fucking go. It's um. <laughs> And he says, uh, the serum just makes you more of yourself. Yeah. Money makes you more of yourself. Like, when I'm... Like, I'm poor. So I, <laughs> I, I'm i living within my means, and I, I there are certain choices that I have to make because I cannot afford to make different choices. Yeah. So... But if you have an insane amount of money, you have the freedom to make any choice you want, and you choose to not help anyone. Yeah, true. <sighs> Tax the rich. Tax the rich. Yeah, very I, much it, so fucks me right off that i'm poor and i pay more in tax than any of the world's richest people do how yeah. fucked is that yeah they've got fucking loopholes up the wazoo um mm-hmm. you know what really does that pisses me off you know I'm relying on the banel the uh not the banel i can't fucking the banal the banality no the the kindness the I'm relying on the kindness of a god benevolence benevolence that's the one i'm relying on the benevolence of a god I'm relying on Jeff Bezos looking at me and taking pity and throwing me some coins from his mountain. It's disgusting. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think Richard Branson like decided to go to space because he was bitter that he couldn't charge three pounds for a bacon roll on a Virgin train anymore. You know, because <laughs> it's Avanti now. Um, does he mm. still own Avanti? Um, no. It's the UK train system is obscure and yeah, complicated and weird. Nationalize the, the railways. What? Yeah, nationalize the rail, <laughs> power, water, broadband, phones. Nationalize it all. Yeah. Um, my power bill literally doubled. Uh, this year. Nationalize it. Don't be a monopoly, please. That yes, would be great. That would be that would be nice, you know. Rather than rather than spouting the same old fucking bullshit about, but it's freedom. You've got the freedom to, to to pick which cut. No, you don't. It's it's a handful of fucking conglomerates at at the yeah. top that have just cornered the entire market. You know, it's like rarely do do, do people go to like small shops anymore. It's either mm. fucking Tesco or ASDA or these huge big chains that are just worth absolute millions. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not about choice. 
it's about a very limited choice mm-hmm. and and overconsumption. Because it's all well and good to say, oh, it's about uh, you can choose to use, like, um, using the example of trains, you can choose uh, which provider you travel on the trains of. It's uh, okay. In theory, I can pick which train I take to London. But to get from my house to the train station, there's only a cross country train yeah. from sort of my little local train station to Stoke Station. And then I have choices, sure. But. It just it, it it's not choice when there's only one choice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and really the only choice to get to London for me is either a Trans Pennine Express that changes about three times to get to London or a straight Avanti train that just goes directly mm. there. I mean, like what sort of choice is that? It's like Trans Pennine makes it look more fucking it makes it harder and it's like, well you've got the choice. It's like well obviously you're gonna go for the easier option. I mean? Yeah, yeah, but <sighs> yeah, it pisses me off as, as well. It's um, as I was looking through my power options, I've talked about this on several pod- podcasts. Somehow, I've stretched this out. It's <laughs> about twenty minutes worth of content. Um, but yeah, it's not a choice because like a uh, U switch is the power comparison site. Um, I think it's the power comparison site. I don't think there are any others. Um, there might be. I've, I've I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, and um. The way that the search function works is like you put in um, like your address and details about your usage and stuff, and then it presents you with a list of options. But the way that the search function works is that the options aren't actually any different to each other because every company offers every type of plan. Yeah. So if I say, no, I, I don't want my tariffs to go up and down. I want to pay the same amount every month. I want to pay a fixed rate. And then I just have a list of different options of how much I want to pay. And obviously, I will pick the cheapest one. Yeah. Uh, which is still double what my power bill was for the first year in this house. It's ludicrous. Yeah, very It's much not so. choice. Do you know what I mean? No, I agree completely. Um, but I think I might be. I think I think my uh, space fuel has run out of this segment. <laughs> yep. Um, so. Well, at least space fuel doesn't contribute to climate change. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, um, it does. good old Boris Johnson taking a jet to Cornwall for the climate summit. Oh, Jesus, oh, fuck. Fucking hell, that's another story. Um, mm. But, yeah, um, going to space, going to, you know, reaching beyond our human means is important, but probably not more important than the well-being of the billions of yes. people on the planet mm. below. Um, not more well-being, not more, more important than people literally dying. Yeah. 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 But that's just us. If you agree, great. If you don't, fuck you. Um, So, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll maybe see you next time. Amazing. Um, Okay, so what are we talking about this week, Dan? Well, we are talking about the hit Marvel TV show, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm sorry, uh, what, what show? I don't... Can you oh. use a, a more recognisable name, please? I don't... I can't remember the fucking an- uh, the abbreviation that you use. Fatwas! Fat... Fat... Fatwas. Oh, okay, we're talking about Fatwas. Okay, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Fatwas. Um, it's a terrible, terrible name. I mean, fucking hell. <laughs> it's like um, War for the Planet of the Apes. Great movie, terrible name. Yeah, true. Um, That is true. I've actually just thought of it. Yeah, that is a- actually that is a shite name for a film. Um, yeah. But uh, this uh, Fatwas was created by Malcolm Spellman and it was uh, directed by Kai Skogland and it is starring Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, Wyatt Russell, uh, Aaron Kellyman and Danny Ramirez. There you go. It's because it was on a different... <laughs> I-, I had to split the-, the-, the noun onto a different Oh, line. I see. So I, I was going to... like. I was going to read it as Ram Iris. <laughs> so there you go. Um, <laughs> do you have an opening statement? Um, I do. I really liked this show. I was not expecting to like this as much as I did, and yet here we are, having enjoyed it. Um, have you got an opening statement? Yes, I do. Um, the most overtly political content Marvel has ever produced that deals with subjects like race relations, class, militarism... And I love being made to grapple with ethical quandaries. Yes, as do I. Um, okay, first things first. 
I expected this to be maybe a little bit better than One Division, but not much. It's way better than One Division. Yeah, I, would say I so. really enjoyed this. Uh, like in terms of pretty much everything. I think Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie have a great sort of relationship as a as a duo. They're sort of they can be funny, they can be serious, they can both act brilliantly. Yeah. Um, I loved seeing the Dora Milaje. I never know whether it's Dora Millard J or Dora Millard Hay. I, I think it's Dora, Dora Millard J. J. Like J. J. Okay. Well, I loved seeing them anyway. They were absolutely brilliant. Always nice to see them. Um, I loved Baron Zemo. He's just a bit weird. And it, it, yeah. It worked and snapped. I liked that we saw um, Sharon Carter and she's kind of a dick now. Um, yeah, I why? liked that. It was nice. <laughs> Well, I liked that she was embittered by experience. She was like, okay, well, I've spent so much time on the run from the government that um, this is where I am now sort of thing. Yeah, but I thought her whole thing was like carrying on Peggy Carter's sort of legacy and then she's just now a, an arms dealer. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, 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 yeah. Um, I kind of liked it. I guess we disagree on that. Um, mm. I thought it was about shit. Yeah. Uh, not the not the show, just that sort of side plot. It's like oh, she's the the is it the banker, the power broker, the power broker. That shit name, yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is it's a very political show. I've got to say, yeah, it is. Um, it takes place um after the blip, after uh, all of all of uh, humanity has been restored, and there's a big ethical problem because um in the time that that humanity was gone. All those that that didn't have homes were put into the homes of those that had gone. Yeah, and and when they came back, obviously people were like, "Who's this? And why why are you in my house?" And um, mm. can you imagine just blipping back into your bed or something, and like, and someone's you just there. roll over, and it's just a guy there, and you're like, "I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> who what, the, who the fuck are you?" What if you were blipped on the toilet and someone came back, like immediately as you were on the toilet? <laughs> Like that that would be wow. I'm glad we didn't see Messy. that. Mm, I'm uh, glad we didn't see that as well. Yeah. No, um. that, would been, that would have been funny. <laughs> 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 um so what did you think of the of the ethical quandary in the show? Well, before I get to the hat, I like that everybody's kind of right. Yeah. Every, everybody's viewpoint is kind of nobody's really out and out wrong. Like, um, but everybody, nobody's really out and out right either. I kind of liked that they give us lots of different options and it's kind of, well, pick one. Do you yeah, know what I mean? True. Um, I obviously do not know what to think about, um, the ethical quandary. I mean, the solution to the housing problem in the MCU is presumably the same as the solution to the housing problem in, in the real world, which is, uh, tax the rich, build more houses. Pre- um, I mean, yeah. presumably. I- so maybe we could do that. <laughs> Yeah, you'd think that that more houses would be built and the people that that live there would just be moved to it, things like that. I mean, because thinking about it logically, the Earth is now in a sort of like a sort of a more united state than it was before. Mm. You know, because mm. everyone has like a common sort of it's sort of like Watchmen. You know, everyone a common has, struggle. Yeah, yeah. Um, now whether that's like translated. Uh, you know, in reality, because I mean, there's still a, there's still stuff like borders, and you know, th- there's that whole thing with Libya, and stuff like that, and them not going into Libyan airspace. Um, mm. So I don't know how united humanity is at this point, but I would think that there would be a sort of, you know, more understanding sort of, um, united sort of fight rather than, you know, the sort of segmented way it was, um before which would make it certainly easier for, for that to happen uh, mm, mm. so i don't i don't know but i do i do like how there's 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 a lot of parallels with stuff that's been happening in the world that we live in with like the refugee crisis and yeah and um you know obviously the stuff that happened with black lives matter and how that's been translated into the show because race was never a, a you know a thing with sam um, before mm, mm. before this show so i think they they definitely had to take the opportunity to sort of talk about real world issues yeah um, yeah i don't know what the i don't know what the message is though because 
on the one hand, yeah, you've got, you know, the villains are this group called the the Flag Smashers, you know, yeah. because it's still Marvel, so you're gonna have to have villains. Somebody to point the finger at and say these are villains, yeah, yeah, and the Flag Smashers are uh, a, a sort of uh, militant group that think that well, you can't just kick us out of the homes that we've inherited and. I would I would agree with that. I would think that that's a bit unfair, you know. Um, I think that there has to be a a solution that works for everyone. But they obviously, in sort of cliche fashion, when when uh, you've got a cause and it goes too far and stuff like that, so mm-hmm. that's the whole sort of thing with them. Um, what did you think of the flag smashers as a group? I I liked them. I have to say. Um, uh, we're getting to a point now where I, I think I can't talk more about it. Have you heard about these things about the how, uh, how it had extensive reshoots and originally the plot was very different? No. Oh well, I'm about to drop a bomb on your head. Um, Ooh. it's uh, originally the theory goes that um the the it was actually like a plot line about a pandemic of some kind. Oh, I see. Like, um, because um as like uh, when Bucky jumps onto that truck um in in the first episode all those crates are labeled like vaccines and stuff like that and there's things like um mama oh uh, mama donna was that her name oh i can't remember oh uh, but the sort of mother figure she's just dying from a mystery illness in this but it would make more sense if she was dying from this pandemic illness of whatever it is engineered by a supervillain or whatever by presumably the guy in madripoor yeah. It would make more sense if she was dying from that illness, and then um, that energizes the the flag smashes into. Well, I suppose they would be the uh, disease smashers. <laughs> <laughs> a bit less less of a good name, but you know what I mean. I suppose they'd be that, and then they would be energized into perhaps going a bit too far, and oh, we're just trying to get vaccines for everybody, sort of thing. And then Anthony Mackie's like, "Yeah, great. Maybe you shouldn't be killing everybody, though." Yeah. Um, so that's. That this is that's one of the things that like because I knew this before I watched the show I knew that in that it was sort of originally shot with a different storyline in mind and then because of coronavirus they obviously didn't want to make a TV show like a big flagship thing it's like yeah this one's about a pandemic and then people are watching it like yeah is wow. this a reality show yeah <laughs> is this just normal um um I I don't think they had reshoots just a creative ending. At creative editing that uh, Darius just put that in the chat you might be right Darius I'm not sure because uh, there are bits and bobs where people are saying things about like the super serum and stuff and it's being shot from the back of their head and it's clear oh. that the super serum was going to be like um maybe a the big cause of the part. vaccine or the, yeah the maybe disease. the cause of the vaccine or the disease or maybe it was just gonna be a big part or a small part anyway because of John Walker wanting it because he's physically fit but he wants the serum um, and yeah. then they just kind of expanded it as much as they could and maybe put in a couple of ADR lines or something to just make the show a bit bigger and a bit more super soldiery. Yeah, I see. Um, um, so that's how the theory goes. So to answer your question, <laughs> um, <laughs> what do I think of the Flag Smashers? I think they would have made more sense as a some kind of anti-pandemic militant vaccine group. I think that makes sense. I think they're... <sighs> killing people to show how injustices are happening in the world it's yeah i mean i'm a big pacifist so that doesn't make sense to me just for any cause but especially for the cause that they're championing um i i kind of do agree with the cause that they're championing it's not fair to just say okay well they're back just everybody out the houses come on everybody out and we're gonna put up these strict international borders again and yep snappy fingers everything's back to normal that's just not a kind of a conductive ways that would it's not a conductive way to sort of run things so i kind of do agree with their cause but obviously i don't agree with burning a building full of people to to go about it so i think marvel did perhaps a good job of making me empathize with anthony mackie and being like yeah that does make sense uh i I agree with anthony mackie (laughs) yeah absolutely um is violence sometimes outside the law justified um hard to say that that's a big question um the problem is what what you're essentially asking with any ethical question is how much suffering is there and how much suffering will there be in a theoretical other situation yeah so if you're 
if you have to do violence in order to um, prevent somebody who's going to go and kill 20 people and you have to physically restrain them and tie them up, then is the net violence that you've lost gr- sort of offset the violence that you've done? Yeah, I'd, I'd say it does. But then it becomes more of a trouble. What if you have to try and kill 20 people in order to save the lives of 20 other people? It's all just one big trolley problem. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so... Is violence outside the law sometimes justified and inside the law sometimes justified? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, but I don't like it. No. What about what? Do you, what, what about you? You? What do you think? I would. I would say the the same. And it's interesting how this show sort of skirts that line because it's in a it's in a sort of society where literally half the planet has been gone, mm. and. I would imagine that that would break down the integrity of a lot of the laws that are being enforced. Oh, a hundred percent, surely, yeah. Because yeah. you know, half of the people that you had enforcing them are fucking disappeared. So it's like, mm. in that sort of state of affairs, that like what, what is law? What is like justice? You know. Mm. Um, mm. I'd also like to point out. Um, this is a complete massive segue. Uh, John Walker would never have been discharged in the real world for decapitating that flag smasher. Yep. Never. He would have been he would have been commended, he would have been given a medal. And mm-hmm. um I, Congratulations, you killed a terrorist. Here's a medal. Yeah, that's yep. y- do you remember do you remember when, you know, um Obama uh Obama's uh, seals killed um Osama bin Laden? There was, you know, Americans were cheering that so that uh, this is the thing about Marvel. Mm. It has this weird sort of view of like what the American government is like. <laughs> is like, mm. you know, because mm. um, it just it that that would just never happen. It would just be like, whoa, yeah, yeah, and there would be there would be cheers and all that. You're a hero, sir. You know, it's just it's it's. But at the same time, they're also trying to like criticize the American government because you've got um the super soldier uh, Isaiah Bradley. Mm-hmm. who was experimented on by the US government which is really interesting and mm-hmm. I'm kind of annoyed that they didn't explore that a bit more and it was just a sort of side thing to it would have been so much better if they had like super soldiers going like militant that had been previously experimented on and that like, would have been quite interesting like, yeah but like maybe Isaiah joined the flag smashers or something like that that could have been mm really interesting you're um, right that could have been interesting yeah because then it's like another layer of sort of moral complexity in a strange way of like well yeah no i do know what you mean i i think that could have been an interesting plot line i, I did i really loved um the performance of the actor playing isaiah whose name has left my head christ i'm talking did i just hit my head at some point and <laughs> every name i've ever learned has fallen out i can't i can't remember it either to be fair um, fucking Winter Soldier. Come on, bloody hell. He was only discharged um, because of the government's public image. I mean, but yeah, but if that was the case, then the people who killed Osama bin Laden would have been discharged as well. His body was like dumped in the sea. You know, there was there was certainly a sort of cult of um, you know. Yeah, get him and all that, you know. I mean, mm, as you mm. know, I'm not saying that that's unjustified, but like the idea that a, a a soldier killing an enemy combatant would ever be treated like some sort of big, um, yeah, be dismissed from the 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 army. Yeah, uh, Carl Lumbly, Carl stunning Lumbly. performance. Yeah, that's what I was much, going for. Very much so. Um, mm. and it's interesting because that also could be viewed as a criticism of the American government because mm. John Walker is a, ultimately a product of his surroundings. You know, mm. he said mm. himself, he's like, I'm do- I did what you taught me to do and only the optics are the reason that he was sort of discharged, you know? Mm. Mm. No, I know what you mean. That's a good point because it's Someone, kind of right. Sorry, <laughs> mate, someone's at my door. Yeah, right. Wait. I think, I think someone's went and got it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> sorry, what were you saying? I was just saying, yeah, it's it's kind of right. Like, um, he is a product of 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 everything that's been around him. It's the thing that made Steve Rogers Steve Rogers was, like Doctor Erskine said, not a good soldier but a good man. But 
um, fucking hell, I've forgotten his name, uh, Wyatt Russell, he was a good soldier before he was a good super soldier. Do you know what I mean? That's that's yeah. not it's not the point. Have you ever no. jumped on a grenade? Yeah, four times. <laughs> that really I made wow. me laugh, that did. That was really, um, I was like, <laughs> oh, stupid. Anyway. I do, I do think I, the way he was characterised, I, I quite like, because you could tell that he was just going to do something bad. But I really don't like how they sort of glossed over it, and he's just on their side at the end, and he's sort of demoted to like US. Yeah, I didn't like that. Agent. Mm. You know, I I wish that he would just have stuck to the being a villain by the end of it. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I do because there are a lot of very interesting Captain America villains in the comics where Steve Rogers has to fight with somebody who has completely opposing ideals. Because the 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 show kind of it's kind of a subplot thing in the show, but it's not really said. The thing that makes Captain America Captain America is that he's an ethically upstanding person. Yeah. It, it's his it's his 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 heart and his soul is what makes him Captain America, not whether he can hold a shield and kick a man down a flight of stairs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's I, I Yeah, you're completely right. I really enjoyed it. Also, by the way, I love the combination of tiny shield and gun. What a what a bizarre <laughs> combination of weapons to give to somebody. So you're giving somebody a shield. I always think surely a sword would make more sense than a gun. Yep. Because a gun is for far away and so is shield. What are you gonna do if a guy is up close with you? Do you know what I mean? It's those two things are too cumbersome for you to deal with a guy that's right in your face. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Such definitely. a bizarre a bizarre anyway. <laughs> here's here's a question. Mm. Why wouldn't like a superhero industry that form around the the remaining superheroes on the planet, like in the boys. Um, I would imagine it's because uh, these superheroes are just really good guys. Yeah. Um, I, I think forgot. that's that's the problem. Is that yeah, these they're sort of everything they do is is well motivated and well meaning. It's it, they've never made a morally grey choice in their lives. Um, so it's that's probably why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even then, like, I mean, they could have they could have had like a different like, a sort of company, sort of follow their sort of antics, you know? Because like I mean, superheroes like up until now, like they're literally part of the the military now, if you know what I mean. Mm, mm. Do you know what I'm really hoping for? Like I What's mean, that? they they sort of had it with Civil War, but I'm hoping that they have like a sort of I don't know if you've ever saw um, Batman and Superman Public Enemies. Where I did not. Where Lex Luthor becomes the president, and okay. Batman and Superman essentially become like criminals, and just have oh. to sort of like, you know, live outside the law. I wish, I wish they would do something like that. I mean, they've sort of got that with Wanda, I guess. Yeah, and they've kind of, kind of had it with Civil War very briefly until until the events of Endgame, um, and I guess Infinity War too. But um, yeah. I know what you mean. I would like to see more moral grayness. Um, uh, there's another thing. Are you aware of the deal with that Marvel has with the U.S. military? What actually Marvel has with the U.S. military? Yeah. No. Yes. What's that? They have a deal where they will only ever show the U.S. military in a good light. Um, oh. If, if so, yeah, you might be you might be waiting a long time for um for well, a, for a morally gray army character that, from Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Um. <laughs> So it's kind of like the events in the show relates just the U.S. government trying to make itself look as good as possible again. Um, mm, mm. I kind of because what is the po- what is the message of this show? Because at the end, basically, nothing is really going to change because Sam gives it. Sam gives a great speech at the end and just says, "You mm. need to do better." But that you know, these people are still going to get. Like, relocated you know like, yeah because it, the, the reason i think uh, that's another thing i think the vaccine storyline would have made more sense is because if sam said you need to do better get your thumb out your eyes and actually get vaccines to these people because they will die without it do you know what i mean that's a powerful message like you're you're fannying about with politics when people are actually dying on the streets yeah that is a is a powerful message and it's relevant to real life but Sam having a, a a speech about ethics and uh, these people are getting relocated. It doesn't have the same weight in in a strange way. Yeah, I would rather he just did it himself. Mm. That would have been more interesting, like, rather than just sort of like, 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 because by this point we know that 
you know, government agencies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are close to useless when it comes mm. to actually dealing with problems. And I'm just wanting to see someone basically say, well, fuck you, and we'll just do it ourselves, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not relocating them, and, we, and we've got a better solution or something like that. You know, that mm. whether whether the, that's the right course of action or not, like, just something like that, someone like really powerful... Who can base it? Who who like if if they had someone like like um Captain Marvel or like Wanda, sort of saying no, well we're not doing that. We're going to do it my way, and yeah, you know like that that's more interesting because yeah it's... because then that does impose an a more interesting ethical problem of like yes life is better but uh, but you can't just unilaterally make decisions yeah but at what cost you know um <laughs> yes but yeah. Um, should we should we read some patron opinions? Go on then. Okay. Well, we've only we've only got we've only got one this week, and it's from our esteemed uh, patron Darius, and it's a long one. So just strap yourselves in. Um, mm-hmm. first thing, the title is a mouthful. <laughs> the se- <laughs> the series is overall pretty good. It deals with the real world history of Black America and brings up the problem of modern day America with the police scene where the police think Sam is in the wrong when, in fact, they were sent to arrest Bucky. Um, Sam is the best arc in the series, uh, with him learning to accept that Steve chose him for his moral code, uh, not on his strength. Um, Bucky is an interesting story, but the series kind of forgets about it until the last episode. But in the early episode, he's scared because his years as the Winter Soldier, he's naturally a violent man Mm, in episode mm. five. Um, my personal favourite of the series, Sam tells to stop living by other people's view and standard and give him some uh, counsel. Uh, John Walker's mm. problem is he's a good soldier, but you need more than that to be Captain America. He probably owns the darkest scene in the MCU, and unlike Sam and Steve, he doesn't. Uh, he really doesn't have a moral code he stands by. True. Well, I, mm, well, he sort of stands by, sort of. U.S. exceptionalism, doesn't he? Mm, mm. Uh, you know that's that 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 could be interesting and be explored. Like maybe a sort of full American nationalism that he sort of takes on. But either way, I want to see John Walker as a villain. Yeah, I I, I couldn't agree more. I'd like to see John Walker sort of, even if he's like leading a faction. If if you know they had to go really on the nose with it, and he's leading a faction of like fascists, I, I'd like yeah. to see John Walker sort of. It's sort of blinkered by his abilities, and he's like, "I'm just so great." So yeah. yeah, these guys are right. I am great. If they can't make the U.S. military like in a bad light, then they can make like a sort of surrogate for it in John Walker, and sort of show the worst aspects of mm. U.S. Mm. militarism. That could be quite cool. Um, interesting. This ma- uh, series' main villain is less villainous than Wanda, and yeah, true. <laughs> Wanda is more villainous than than Carly uh, Morgenthau. Um, mm. uh, kinda, uh, we both uh, Carly and Sharon got what they wanted. Um, yeah, they kind of did because Carly kind of got the best of both worlds. Um, what the hell did Carly want again? I don't think she... so. That's another problem I have with with the flag smashes. Is their goal is kind it's of unclear, very vague. Yeah, it's like, like they. They want to stop resettlement and get back into their home, but nobody actually ever says that. They just kind of think, "Oh, we'd we'd have nothing to be refugees from. We're we're upstanding people." Well, they want okay, n- but what do you want? They want nations without borders, don't they? Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I suppose that makes sense, but but that it's... feels contra to what they're actually doing. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. Yeah, I mean, you know, personally, eventually, I would like a world without borders. Mm, you know, mm. but for that to work, you would have to change fundamentally the way that human beings view the world that we live in. Yeah, yeah. You know, because at the moment, the way that we've evolved, the way that you know, we've we've sort of been brought up, and the sort of struggles that we've had to deal with, it's very difficult for human beings to look beyond what's immediately in front of us. You know, mm, mm. whether it be your small town, and as far as it goes, it's probably just your country that you can sort of get to before you, you know, like you can care about different people. But I think overall, a lot of people still have this sort of like 
yeah, well, my country, well, you know, it's very sort of nationalistic the way we sort of view the world, and I think capitalism mm. has a lot to do with that as well. So you yeah, need, I agree. You would need to change the driving force of essentially most human beings, because right now it's 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 you know selfishness. It's sort of the individual, you know, and mm. it would need to be about the collective rather than you know just one person and one person's family you know for that to mm. to ever work and that would take i would say um, hundreds of years maybe or a mm. hundred mm. years at least um so yeah but we'll see what happens <laughs> um uh also sharon being the power broker doesn't make sense if zemo knew them before civil war that's true that's a good point actually yeah Unless she like, took over for someone who was the power broker before her. Maybe she like inherited the throne. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, which sort of makes... It makes kinda... a bit more sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, Final note before my rating in the making of Anthony... In the making of this, Anthony Mackey dedicated the series to George Floyd and Brianna Taylor. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, good stuff. Absolutely. Um... So yeah, thank you, Darius. Uh, yes. his, his rating is eight point six out of ten, which is very specific, Darius. Very, very specific. <laughs> what would have been an eight point seven or an eight point eight? <laughs> um, I think that I've seen a lot of people say that politics ruined the show, and um, <laughs> and see when people say that, it just screams to me, no, it didn't. You just didn't see the politics that you wanted to see. Mm. If you know what I mean, like I'd, 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 great, yeah. I don't think that people see people that say, "Oh, I hate politics," you know, it, "Oh, oh, this identity politics stuff it ruins TV shows." No, it's just that you don't see the the ultra yeah conservative yeah. politics that you like. You know what I mean? Mm. It yeah, I I agree with you. That's my problem with it is politics is sort of everything. To say you hate politics is strange because you will still have opinions on should we feed. Uh, should we give kids free school meals? Should we do yeah. this? Should we do this? You will still have opinions on these things, even if you don't call it politics. Things are things only become political when a politician decides to say them in the Houses of Parliament. Yeah, that's definitely. that's all it is. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, definitely. Um, I liked. Um, I mean, I love Sebastian Stan's performance. Pretty much always. I think he's really good. Um, I liked that we see uh, Bucky be something other than broody. Um, yes. I like that he's like he has opinions and he's happy and he's joking. And I don't know. I just I just like it. It's nice to actually see that a different side to that character. Because um, in Infinity War, when he briefly showed, it was it? Oh God, what was it? It, it was the post credit scene of something when they revealed that Bucky was in Wakanda. Uh, Wakanda, that's not... <laughs> Wakanda. Um, and they revealed he was there. And I remember sitting in the cinema and going, oh, for God's sake. Because there's, <laughs> like, there's just so much like stuff, so much build-up for this one character. Yeah. And they never delivered on it. Um, but I like now, finally, that we're getting some actual characterization from Bucky. He yeah. does feel genuine remorse for what he's done. And he's trying to make a difference. He's trying to sort things out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even though it could be argued that he you know, wasn't entirely responsible, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with Zemo on supremacy. I don't think that super soldiers uh, should be a thing. Um, and I understand why he thinks that, but at the same time, it sort of falls flat on the fact that he's a baron and that... Yes, it does. (laughs) ...lives in privilege and... (laughs) Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, um... As a butler and a private jet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, no, you're completely right. I I, I think that um, Super Soul. I think I liked that we showed we were showed both sides of the argument because it's very Marvel to just show you one side of the argument and pretend that's the right side. Yeah, uh, whether it is or isn't. And um, I liked that we were shown both of them. And um, because Zemo was like, well, power will corrupt anybody eventually. Anybody with the Super Soldier Serum will become corrupted eventually. Um, so it, the serum shouldn't exist, and super soldiers shouldn't exist. Um, I say, well, it never corrupted Steve. So, yes, and he was like, well, touche. But has there ever been another Steve Rogers? Was he just one man and a million, billion, billion other men? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what about money, Zemo? How about that? Does that corrupt people? 
Mm-hmm. Does extreme wealth corrupt people? Is that maybe something that you could look into? <laughs> maybe? No? Hmm. But, um... <laughs> I kind of got a bit better there. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's I think I think that's right because let's let Steve is like just ridiculously good, you know, just ridiculous, ridiculously yeah, yeah. a good guy, um, which is kind of I mean I support because the see the problem with shows like this, the problem with shows like this is like you they're trying to have their cake and eat it if you know what I mean. Mm. They can't just have a sort of big cinematic, um, you know. Marvel superhero event where the good and the bad are clearly defined mm, and mm. also after that try and have morally grey shows with ethical questions <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know it's like if you're going like if, if, if we're going to be morally grey the characters in this show would be nowhere near as, as, as pure of heart as they are do you know what I mean mm, mm, no you're right it um yeah I mean yeah I I do find it interesting that they do point out oh well not everybody is is morally good and that's the way it is but we are we're morally good that's yeah. it's a strange thing to point out but I quite like it no definitely but you know it's there's still that hero dynamic and it's like they mm. they sort of have the the moral high ground you know which mm. it's it's fine. But if they continue to just make speeches about the moral high ground, then it's like... Do they really have it? Yeah, yeah. exactly, you know. Um, if, if, if you know, Sam realises that what's going on here is wrong, rather mm. than just sort of saying, you need to do better. It's like, well, why don't you do it, mate? <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got numerous uh, uh, resources at your disposal with the people that you know and the people that would that I believe would support you, you know, you've got, it's just something that <laughs> really annoys you. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when, when uh, Trump and Biden were fighting for the election and Biden got elected. And I know that mm. a, like, a lot of people were happy about that, obviously, because Trump is a fucking absolute Satan spawn. But at the same time, mm. it's like, it's he's not a very good choice. It's no, just that he's yeah. miles better than Trump, you know. And like mm-hmm. the other day, he was like, "I know that communism is a failed system. I know it's a failed system." And I'm just, it, and you know, the the airstrikes that he's already sort of put Sanctions. out. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's just he reminds you that yeah, okay, he's much better than Trump, but he's still an establishment sort of, you know, shell. Yeah, yeah, militaristic Democrat. It's like, yeah. And that's the way I feel about this show. I mean, it can talk all day about being progressive and stuff like that, but mm. that is really where it begins and ends because all these mm. people are still going to get displaced and a, a speech is not going to change very much, you know? Um, no, because even if he changes those politicians' minds, the council was bigger than those three guys. Yeah! Like, do you know what I mean? It's... It's... Uh, it's, it's it's kind of fucked that the, the show is i don't know it's if you view it as some kind of metaphor maybe it works a bit better if you say oh, well in theory sam being the new captain america energizes the american people's sort of morals and and so, sort of makes them take a step back and and view what they can do to better themselves and their communities maybe that's good but he didn't do that he didn't actually do that so if you want me to view it as a metaphor great but if you don't then it doesn't have quite the weight I wanted it to. Yeah, I mean it's it's just it sort of reminds me of like these companies having woke politics, but they won't go to the logical conclusion of where the politics lead. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yes, we need to be you know uh, we we need, let's let but because they realise that at the end of that road is really the sort of breaking up of these big companies, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. So, so that's why I, f- I find it a bit disingenuous, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's the... Um, it's, it's, I'll tell you what it is. It's like the um, companies changing their logos from Pride logos to regular logos. Oh, yeah, they've changed like, them ju- back now. The first day of July, yeah. It's like, well, are you only allowed to support, like, LGBT plus rights just for, just for June? Is that it? Yeah. 
And see, when I say, oh, that's that's kind of good, all I have to think about is the fact that that's been discussed in a board meeting with marketing people. And it's like, yeah. yes, and, yeah. the, and they've got fucking statistic, statistics about LGBT people and how that's going to, you know, impact them so that more people Boost will their buy their... And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's kind of... Cause, yeah, even the people that were like, oh, well, I'm going to boycott my um, Nescafe coffee maker because... Um, because they've changed their logo for Pride Month. Okay, you're going to go and smash it up with a hammer. And let's be honest, you're probably going to go and buy another one after that. Yeah. Because it's a thing that you use in your life. It's oh, it's it, it pisses me off. Yeah. I mean, it's not all bad because shows like this ultimately shift the Overton window towards mm-hmm. more progressive sort of ideals, um, which is good which is is a good thing obviously yeah it's it it, yeah very much so So it's just frustrating to look at sort of to think about what you know politics could be and what i would argue politics should be yeah it's this this sort of much much further left version of where we are now and to see it it frustrates me that we're taking baby steps because a lot of people it'll be like pulling the wool off their eyes and being like no no these things you've been told are great things like capitalism and and um british um uh, exceptionalism. You pull the wool off the rice and say, okay, we'll analyse that a bit deeper. Yeah, austerity. Is that really true? Is it really good? Is the austerity good? It's it's like a spell is broken and suddenly people's politics w- might go to a a, 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 the, a a much more left-wing place that I can actually agree with. And then we can start to make changes. Yeah, definitely. So I understand that minute changes over time are the possibly the best way to do it, but it frustrates me that we have to do it. Because there are other ways which might be better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, I think there's another bit of bullshit you wanted to talk about. So have you got any final CRQs, any closing statements? I've got a closing statement. Um, Go on, hit me. Uh, it's basically just the same, uh, what I've said. I'm confused as to what the message is because on the one hand, uh, it's progressive. And then the other hand, you're reminded that the moral high ground borderless leftists are the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, <it's>, um, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, that's that's very true. I um as with one division, it tries to pose some difficult questions. Um and doesn't really do a great job, but there are some stunning performances throughout, which is always nice. So that's good, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Um but anyway, next bit of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's made a cardboard cutout of me. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> How great is that? Yeah, so let me let me just explain what's happened, right? So I got um a Google alert um uh, on my on my phone via my email and uh, I'm gonna get it up right now and I'm just gonna look to where it to where it took me. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And I clicked the link and the link says Daniel Kerr in brackets suit celebrity cardboard cutouts and i was like what the fuck is this uh so i clicked the link and it took me to celebritycutouts.co.uk and Mm -hmm. and i saw what appears to be myself in a suit and yeah you can get a life-size cardboard cutout of me in your room with me staring at you all day isn't that fun um, Brilliant. Uh, the mini cutout, if anybody's wondering, is 60 centimetres tall, 21 centimetres wide, uh, which is 12 quid. Uh, the life-size cutout is 40 quid. So, <laughs> isn't that tempting? No. Um... <laughs> the other related products here are people from Doctor Who. Yeah, David so I Bradley. I presume, yeah. Jenna I've got Coleman. Jenna Coleman, Peter Capaldi. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's really, it's really weird. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I, there's not really much commentary to be brought on it, but I just, I'm, I'm just curious as to why mm. they've chosen myself. Well, t- to make there a... is a button at the top of the page here that's called "Request a Celebrity," so there's a chance that um, oh. somebody did just request you. Possibly, I mean, I don't know who would, 
I don't know who would do that. Now, I know what, I know what people are <laughs> going to be thinking. People are going to be thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone did this, yeah. He didn't definitely go on and choose himself <laughs> to be made into a couple. I swear on my life that I did not have anything to do with this because it's so fucking creepy. Look, what's what's the actual height? Is it like six foot? Is that the 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 tallest version? Um, uh, the maximum height of six foot three, uh, and since you're less than six foot three, it's your act. This cardboard cutout is your actual height, which is what your height. You're the same height as me, five foot six, aren't you? No, I'm I'm taller than that. I'm I'm six foot seven. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, definitely. Um. Oh, so if you yourself want a, a real-life Daniel Kerr cardboard cutout in your house, you can get one for the small price of 40 quid. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> 40 quid. It's made of cardboard. Like, how much is, like... You're both yeah. short. Darius says, okay, Darius, fucking hell. I mean, <laughs> launching, launching missiles in the chat there. Like, what the... F- <laughs> um... Uh, Made from heavy duty corrugated cardboard. Well, Ooh. it's heavy duty corrugated cardboard, Lewis. It's gonna be for. What are we gonna quid. be doing with it? Yeah. Oh Jesus! I wonder if you can like get a sex doll of yourself. I certainly hope you can't, and I hope you hadn't. I wish you hadn't have said that because now it'll stress me out thinking about that. <laughs> There's an episode of It's Always Sunny where um, <laughs> where, where, where the lead one of the lead characters leaves and. To cope, one of the other characters gets a sex doll of them. Oh, of course, yes, to cope. And eventually, the the sex doll that starts talking to them, but <laughs> it's not that it's not talking to them. They can they're just so traumatized by the the character's behavior that they can imagine exactly what they're saying and end up having like, conversations with it. And then by the end of the episode, that character returns and they all absolutely shit themselves and try and kill him. And it's just Danny DeVito pulling out a gun and going, shit, kill it! Like, <laughs> yeah. That's what we need. That's what we need is to, to get this cardboard cut out of you and then animate it so you talk like the Canadians from South Park. Yes. So it's like your entire head bobs up and down. Yeah. Yep. Shut, shut your funky fucking face, Uncle Fucker. <laughs> you should get one Lewis and you should put it in your house and you could have like imaginary conversations we could do that thing that Simon imagined at the end of the <gasps> four o'clock club where oh god yeah but instead of Eli <laughs> talking Simon's dream episode of the four <laughs> o'clock club um, so for those that don't know uh, Simon Lowe good friend of the show um, <laughs> <laughs> even though we haven't spoke to him for about eight years <laughs> um, he um he had a theory about how uh, Eli and Owen's story would end in the four o'clock club, and what would happen is is that Eli would um would uh, would kill Owen, and um but keep his corpse so that Eli <laughs> could pretend that he was still alive. Yep. And le- and sit and talk to him and have dinners with him. So I, I'm 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 saying that Lewis should do that. Uh, with, with, yes, but with, with the imaginary corpse that is Daniel's cardboard cutout. Yeah, so you're you're not only imagining that I'm talking to you, you're also imagining that I'm a corpse that mm-hmm. you're imagining talking to. So that just adds, you know, it's it's like onions, lots of layers. Layers, layers. Yeah. So there you go. Um, this is a bit of a short uh, one. It just really creeped me out when I saw it, and I was yep, like, "It's because it's creepy." It's really fucking creepy. I don't know who did this. But you're... It was Danny. We all know it was It Danny. wasn't me, I swear to God. It was Danny. God. 100% it was Danny. He went, he went and found a cardboard cutout website I where you swear can to I, oh my God. to get a cutout of them. I did not do this. Lewis, it'll be perfect for social distancing. <laughs> true, true. I can sit with cardboard Danny while real Danny ventriloquists, ventriloquists him from across the room. <laughs> yeah, but no, I didn't. I didn't do this. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I. S- <laughs> I don't even have this picture. Like, if I Google Daniel Kerr, do you reckon that picture will come up in the Daniel? Maybe. Daniel Kerr. I think what will come up is um the the rugby player. Uh, well, I can't spell, so we're having some trouble there. Um, 
yes, there, there is a rugby player. It's mostly the rugby player. Daniel Kerr, if I Google Daniel Kerr, actor. Yeah, maybe that'll do it. Um, this picture of you is not here. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it myself. I can't, I can't seem to find it. That's really. Where did they get this photo? Then? I don't fucking. Wait. Oh no, I know. They got it from what? um Where? when I went to the uh, the soap awards. Oh, okay. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> fucking hell! What a weird fucking turn of events. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, Danny? You you could never have predicted it, could you? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Danny orchestrated this, everyone. I didn't! No, he did. I didn't! Okay. Um, yeah, well, that's the bit of bullshit over, because Lois is now yeah. accusing me of making a cardboard cutout of myself. I'm not accusing you, Danny. I am rightfully asserting. And charging 40 quid! <laughs> Yeah, Danny started this business uh, to create cardboard <laughs> cutouts um, of of celebrities in general, with the hopes that one day <laughs> he would be a big enough celebrity to be able to make and sell a cardboard cutout of himself. And because and because it hasn't happened yet, I'm just like, oh fuck it, I'll just do it, and hopefully no one will notice. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. Oh god. Oh right. Let's let's call it a day there. Um. <laughs> I want to get in touch with this company and see if we can get a discount code. Yes, so you, oh yeah, have a cardboard cutout of you. <laughs> we need a new sponsor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, uh, the the title of this uh, episode of Nugget of Bullsh- uh, uh, Bullshit segment will just be "Sponsor us, please." Ce- celebrity cutouts. Um, <laughs> Oh man! Right. Well, thanks so much for uh, listening and watching, folks. Uh, yeah. We'll... And remember to buy Danny's cardboard cutout himself. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, folks. Um, that was episode eighty-two of uh the the podcast. Um, uh, that was Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it was what? Sorry. It was Fatwas. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. Um, Lewis, shall we do some... I'm not the one making cardboard cutouts himself. Shut up! Shall we do... <laughs> shall we do <laughs> some... <laughs> shall we do some shilling? Yeah, go on then. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> we all have link trees. Um, Lewis's link tree is linktr.ee slash Lewis underscore Brindley. Mine's is slash O'Hiram. And the podcast's is slash shouting into the void. And the cardboard cutout version of myself... <laughs> Is a, a haunted house? So I, I, I don't know. Um, haunted house spooky Scotsman. Yeah, there you go. Haunted house spooky spooky Scotsman at gov. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> at gov dot <laughs> uk. <laughs> um, yeah. So there you'll find our socials, our Instagram, our YouTube, and all that. So go have a look. See see what you fancy. Uh, we have a PayPal donate button, so anything you can spare, anything at all, would be greatly um, appreciated. Uh, we also have a Patreon. And we want to take the opportunity, as we do every week, to thank our wonderful, wonderful patrons. Uh, Chloe. Thank you. Darius. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Aditya. Thank you. Richard. Thank you. Natalie. Thank you. And Doogie. Thank you. One and all, you make the show possible, and you allow us to keep talking about shows that we like but don't like, which is always nice. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So thank you. Um, we also have merch on Teespring and Redbubble. Um, so we sell uh, tote bags, jumpers, uh, cardboard cutouts of me, everything that you need <laughs> to get you through the year. He's uh, admitted it. He's selling cardboard <laughs> cutouts of himself. <gasps> <laughs> the conspiracy is is revealed. Lewis, I can't even make a website for myself. Why the fuck would I make a cardboard <laughs> cutout website? Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so go have a look. See what you fancy. And if you don't fancy anything, move on with your life. Um, <laughs> and last if you don't but, fancy anything, treat yourself to a cardboard cutout of Danny. Fuck off! <laughs> we also um, we're also partnered with uh, an amazing company called Number Twelve Crochet Avenue, and Lewis is going to say some wonderful things about them, all of which are true. 
Indeed I am. Number 12 Crochet Avenue is a wonderful company run by my wonderful wife, in which she crochets, and she's very good at it. If you'd like to bless your Instagram feed with some beautifully aesthetically pleasing content, uh, then you can check it out at number 12 Crochet Avenue on Instagram. And um, yeah, take a look, see what she's up to, and your Instagram feed and your eyeballs will thank you. Uh, and I will also thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, that was uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It was. Yes, and... Uh... What are we doing next week, Lewis? Shall I spin the wheel? Yeah. Well, you'll have to tell me when it stops spinning, but yeah. Woo! It stopped! Well, hey, uh, yeah, we're doing Loki next week. Yeah! Um, with good old bit of tea hitters and O widders and... I don't know enough of the names of the people in it to do this for everybody. But yeah, we're doing Loki, um, the Disney Plus series uh, starring Tom Hiddleston as Loki, um, if you couldn't tell. Uh, I'm really excited. I haven't seen it yet. I love Tom Hiddleston, so this should be good. Absolutely. And it'll be the last time that we talk about Marvel forever. Um, No. Um, Yeah, but it'll be the end of the Marvel extravaganza. It's been a big sort of jump, big ride. Uh, You know, it's been crazy. But that'll be the last one, and then we're going to go back to doing what we do best. Talking about shit. Shit, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So We'll we... find a nice, shitty, really weirdly crap movie to talk about, promise. We will, we will. Um, nobody will have heard of it, and we will talk about it at great length. Absolutely. Longer than we've talked about this. Um, yes. So, we will uh, see you, hear you, smell you, um, b- make a cardboard cutout of you next time. Indeed we will. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.